Coming up on News 3 at 530, after the rain and the flooding, volunteers return to Reedsburg to remove the sandbags. And a live look outside. A beautiful weekend here, but maybe coming to an end. What does this week have in store? This is News 3 at 530. Good evening and thanks for watching News 3 at 530. I'm Amanda Quintana. Sauk County will start damage assessments this week and learn just how much damage flooding and storms caused to that area. But in the meantime, cleanup efforts are in full swing as water from the Baraboo River is receding. Roschmidt introduces us to some members of the support system in Reedsburg. Just four days ago, North Webb Avenue was closed because of standing water covering this entire street. But now people who live on this street are watching the water levels go down and the help pour in. Cleanup is always a big effort after the floods. So big that the Department of Natural Resources is busing volunteers around Reedsburg. We've been removing sandbags. Bringing half a dozen people at a time. It is very physical hard labor. To homes like this one on North Webb. Sandbagging is, is a lot of work, but after they're wet, it's even more work. A lot of crews go out and try to make contacts with uh, the homeowners and try to, to help them out with sandbagging or if they have furniture in the basements and try to really help them clean up. Doing what they can. It's a good team effort. To make a difference. Some people can help out with their with their money and some people can help out with their back. So this is not the first time this week Janice Luxon has pitched in. We were helping prepare for the floods uh, last week and then uh, helping uh, between the two floods in uh, Reedsburg and Laval, moving things, moving things down in Rock Springs and getting ready for the uh, second deluge. The wall is now coming down. Basically take them out of the curb and the city will pick them up and then dispose of them. Thanks to 50 volunteers from all over Wisconsin. I had somebody from Waukee come to help, so it's been very heartwarming the response that this community has gotten. Work that is well appreciated. Very important to these communities, trying to get them back on their feet but far from over. It's important to remember that other communities are needing our help as the waters, waters go down. Over the next couple of days, the DNR plans to set up volunteer reception centers in Rock Springs, North Freedom, and Baraboo, and they could definitely use your help. In Reedsburg, I'm Rose Schmidt for WISC News 3. Thank you, Rose. And if you're not able to volunteer, you're encouraged to donate to flood victims through the First Presbyterian Church in Reedsburg. The church is asking for hygiene kits, school supplies, and monetary donations. Now that floodwaters in Sauk County are finally starting to go down, work on assessing the damage can begin. Assessors are scheduled to be back in Laval today. They were actually supposed to start work last Monday before the second round of rain and heavy winds flooding forced them to leave. Sauk County Emergency management says those assessors won't be able to visit every home right now, but they'll be collecting a sample of the damage for emergency declaration purposes. They'll be back later for a more thorough assessment. Officials say people should be on the lookout for possible scammers and any legitimate assessor will have proper ID. Dane County is waiving permit fees usually associated with construction for anyone whose properties may have been damaged by flooding. While zoning permits aren't needed for some weather related repairs, other residential building does require those plans to be approved by the county. Erosion control fees have to be paid if the changes are within a thousand feet of a lake. Those permits start at $50 for homeowners. The county board adopted a similar exemption when an EF3 tornado hit Stoughton in 2005, damaging $35 million worth of property. According to the latest estimates, Dane County homes and businesses sustained about $155 million in damage in the recent flooding. All right, let's turn it over to Dana Fulton with a look at your first alert forecast. Hi, Dana. Hey, everyone. So we've had a really lucky weekend for us. A lot of clear weather, a nice sky, a little breezy outside today, but otherwise uh, no complaints with this forecast. Our Doppler track almost completely bare throughout Wisconsin, really throughout much of uh, the Midwest. The rain now very really far southeast into parts of Indiana and Ohio. The only warning still in effect, we have some flood warnings for, of course, the Baraboo River, parts of it, the Rock River as well, and uh, Fox River. So those are all isolated little flood warnings near the rivers as waters are receding, but still certainly a concern for some areas. Temperature wise, it is cool and comfortable. 68 in Madison, 70 in Janesville and in Lone Rock right now. Those dew points 
in the 40s, which means there's no humidity to factor in. Again, just a little breeze for us. We saw some wind gusts today, close to 20 miles per hour, but that wind now calming down. Overnight, we will stay clear and a little chilly. Now, this may be the first time we've dropped below 50 degrees since June. Our overnight low about 48 for Monday morning. We'll take a closer look at the week ahead in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Dana. In eastern Wisconsin today, the Coast Guard is telling people to stay out of Lake Michigan. Officials say waves could climb upwards of eight feet high this weekend. Waves aren't the only issue, as the Coast Guard says the current often carries an undertow that could pull you under. Dangerous swimming conditions exist until at least tomorrow morning. New tonight in Madison, Madison police say they're investigating a report of a sexual assault near Elvert Park. Officers say it happened yesterday afternoon on the sidewalk near McKenna Boulevard and Park Heights Court. The suspect allegedly forced sexual contact on a 17 year old boy. Police are still searching for that suspect. Madison police also say a teenager is in the Dane County Jail tonight after threatening a Metro bus driver. Officers say around 1030 last night on the 800 block of Badger Road, the teenager threatened to punch the bus driver. When he was arrested, police found a handgun on him and some marijuana. He's being charged with possession of marijuana and fell in possession of a firearm. One of Madison's biggest athletic events outside of the university is bringing thousands of athletes to the Madison area. The 17th annual Wisconsin Ironman got underway early this morning. The triathlon had to adjust some of its course this year to deal with flooding downtown. We're still waiting to hear how many athletes participated this year, but last year the event brought more than 2,000 people. Fans cheering on athletes today say it is a moving event. I think it's pretty cool how inspiring this is and you and you hear people from all over the world that are competing from Russia and Lithuania and all these different countries. The last races will be wrapping up tonight around midnight. It's been nearly two months since Sun Prairie's deadly gas explosion, and while recovery is still underway, people are trying to find ways to help. Today in Sun Prairie, there was a lemonade stand benefiting the Sun Prairie Disaster Relief Fund. Our Savior's Lutheran Church organized the event. They say, although to some people the explosion seems like a memory, it is never too late to help. I think any time that there's a disaster, um, you know, it's easy to support right after it happens. But the reality is those, those businesses, those families will struggle for quite some time. So it's important to remember them and support them. Sun Prairie firefighters also stopped by the event to enjoy a glass of lemonade. Oktoberfest won't be for a while, but it's never too early to celebrate Puptoberfest. Dog owners grab special drinks at Capitol Brewery and enjoy the views. Money raised from the event goes to Occupaws. The local nonprofit trains and provides guide dogs to the visually impaired. Organizers say that support like this is essential. Guide dog to someone, it means independence. Basically, you can go out and you don't have to worry about the curbs and the traffic and the, and the branches. That guide dog gives you the independence to go out and live your life without having to rely on someone else. Your dog is your partner. Wisconsin's visually impaired can get one of the guide dogs at no extra cost. Puptoberfest participants also enjoyed live music, vendors, and doggy games, of course. On a sunny day like today, a dip in the pool probably sounds refreshing, and it was for our four-legged friends this morning. They got a chance to dog paddle at Goodman Pool, cooling off and taking over the pool area. Proceeds are going to Capital Canines, a group that supports and maintains Madison Police's canine unit. The working dogs are not purchased by the city. Uh, all the uh, funds that we raise go directly to the dogs, to their purchase, their veterinary care, their food, their training, their equipment. So it's really important that the community comes out and supports them. There were also competitions for longest jump, best trick, and fastest swimmer. Coming up next, a Colorado man searches for his birth parents, then ends up officiating their wedding. That sweet story is coming out of Marshfield when we return.
Welcome back. A man who set out to find his birth parents after he learned he was becoming a dad himself ended up playing matchmaker, reuniting them all the way to the altar. CBS News correspondent Vladimir Duthiers has the story from New York. I'm uh, Martin Schmidt. I'm their son. <laughs> this moment captured on cell phone video was more than three decades in the making. But the journey to get here, an altar under a tent in rural Wisconsin, was a journey of heartbreak pain, but most of all, love. The parents that adopted me um, have always been super supportive. 36-year-old Martin Schmidt was a newborn when he was adopted. His birth mother, Michelle Newman, was just 16 years old when she found out she was pregnant, several months after she and her high school boyfriend, Dave Lindgren, broke up. I struggled with the decision. I just prayed adoption was the best choice. Did you ever stop thinking about him? Never. Never. Michelle and Dave went their separate ways after Martin's adoption. Michelle moved to Hawaii. Dave stayed in Wisconsin and had several biological and stepchildren. In 2014, with a baby of his own on the way, Martin got in contact with his birth mom. She, in turn, reached out to Dave. We talked until 2 o'clock that morning. It's so around the phone in probably three hours. And it just, it just felt natural, like we just picked up from 17, 18 years old again. And then later in the month, you know, she's like, well, why don't you come out to Hawaii? Their connection and chemistry was instant. That trip led to dating. Eventually, Michelle moved back to Wisconsin, and the couple's relationship with each other and Martin blossomed. To watch him with his kids, he just connects with them, pays attention to them, sees them. His parents did a great job. You two have found each other and fallen in love after finding me. <laughs> in early August, Dave and Michelle tied the knot and Martin officiated. You know, I think that the reason that this is working out so well is that these are really good people. Martin's adoptive and birth parents are both involved in the lives of his children, and he says the whole situation couldn't have worked out for the better. Vladimir Dutip, CBS News, New York. Martin said the acceptance and support from his adoptive parents and sister made all the difference in reconnecting with his birth parents. What a cool story. Well, after weeks of rain, it looks like we're looking at more sun heading into the work week. Thank goodness. Dana Fulton has your first alert forecast after this.
overall quite a lovely weekend for us and we've certainly needed it and deserved it. Right now things look clear on our Dar Doppler track. Uh, no rainfall anywhere in Wisconsin, not seeing anything in Illinois and most of Indiana. The showers are stretching all off to the east. Moving into the New England area, no threats for us. That area of low pressure is pulling away. We have a northeast breeze right now. No major threats as we look into the start of next week. And here's a hint through the rest of the week. We're also looking pretty good. It's really moving into a nice pattern for us and a nice little dry trend also for the whole week ahead. Again, right now, no rainfall, just a few river warnings, flood warnings still in effect for parts of the Baraboo River, also the Rock River. Uh, those are isolated areas as the water continues to recede and pull away. And through the rest of the week, as we stay dry, that's going to be good news for those areas. Our northeast breeze continues overnight. We stay mostly clear tomorrow. Also looking more mostly clear. Our breeze shifts directions just a little bit, though, as we head into Monday evening. And and finally, by Tuesday, we have a little southern airflow. It will warm us up. You'll see in our 10 day in just a second for both Tuesday and Wednesday. When it comes to our tropical system, right now we have Hurricane Florence continuing to move west uh, at about seven miles per hour behind Florence right now. We do have two more storms that we are keeping an eye on tropical storm and a hurricane already. So tropics certainly brewing. We're in the middle of September as Florence does continue to move west. It's going to continue to strengthen, getting a little more water, getting in some warmer water, a category four hurricane by Tuesday morning. And then by the end of the week, we are looking at the potential right now uh, for landfall along the uh, east coast, the Atlantic coast. But again, this is a very, very early look at what we're expecting for the end of the week in the tropical situation. Of course, we just saw rainfall just south of us from the remnants of Gordon. So that's why we like to keep an eye on what's going on in the tropics, just in case. It's been a little breezy out. Side. Right now we're at about 10 miles per hour. We saw some wind gusts close to 20 miles per hour today. The good news tomorrow, our wind speeds will die down as they shift directions. We'll stay in the single digits for our Monday. The only downside, any folks with some ragweed allergies right now, things are a little itchy. We're looking at a medium to high day for Monday. Uh, the chance for some ragweed to barely pick up. Right now we have a lovely clear sky for us. Really expecting a beautiful evening. Our high today was 69, currently sitting just a little cooler at 68. Not much of a cool down since our afternoon high. Overnight lows will be much cooler. Mostly clear at about 48 to start off tomorrow morning. 72 are high for the day. Very pleasant outside and mostly sunny for Monday. And then as we look ahead through the next seven days, we've got a lot of sun in the forecast. There's that warm up for Tuesday and Wednesday as our air, our wind direction switches just a little bit coming from the south rather than the north. And then our next opportunity for rain is really going to hold off until we get closer to the start of next week. All right, it's nice to see all those little suns. Cross. Right, it feels right. Good. Uh, they kept copy and pasting for each day, and I'm like, mm, this is right, right? Yeah, yeah okay, we're good. It's right. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. Well, a big night at Lambeau as the Packers open their season against the Bears. More from Green Bay coming up next in sports.
Well, the 197th meeting between the Bears and Packers tonight, Green Bay has a slight edge on the series 96 and 94 6. Brian McClune from our affiliate in Lacrosse has more from Lambeau Field. Title Town is buzzing. The 100th season in Green Bay Packers history begins tonight against longtime rival Chicago. 197th meeting between the two teams. Of course, the Bears made the big news last week, landing former Defensive Player of the Year Khalil Mack. Packers are going to have some new looks as well after a disappointing 7-9 season a year ago. Aaron Rodgers is healthy. He has the new deal and a new offensive weapon in tight end Jimmy Graham. We're also going to get our first look at the Mike Pettin-led defensive unit against Chicago. The team knows a big win in week one, especially against a division rival, can go a long way to a successful season in 2018. You have to win those division games, so I think we're, we operate at a success rate of 72% over our time here. And, and, and But we all know you want to be in those four, five, six wins a year in your division because um, it definitely enhances your, your playoff opportunity. I think it will mean more in the long run, but you know, for us, we can't make any more uh, of what it is than just the first game, a divisional game, a tough game. So, um, But hopefully it's another win, and hopefully it's, uh, you know, when it's all said and done, you and you got more wins than you do losses. Green Bay is relatively healthy going into this game. Backup safety Josh Jones is out. Linebacker Oren Burks and James Crawford are both questionable. Green Bay has won three straight season openers. They'll go for four. Kickoff tonight at 7:20. Reporting with the pack, Brian McClune, News 3 Sports. All right, now to college. Despite some first half hiccups, the Badgers prevailing over New Mexico yesterday at Camp Randall, but evidently not impressive enough for this week's Associated Press voters. Here are the top six teams in the country right now. Alabama still at the top with 54 of the first place votes, followed by Clemson, Georgia, and Ohio State. Oklahoma jumps Wisconsin this week, the Badgers at number six, and there is some voter in the country who gave Wisconsin its only first place vote this week. Opportunity up for grabs for the Brewers today, a series sweep for the first time since July 4th when they swept the Twins. A win today would also mean hanging on to the lead over the Cardinals in the NL wildcard standings. Two and a half games coming into today. Brewers were down one nothing until Ryan Braun hit one to center field. But first, uh, he gets hit there and a little tiff with the umpire and uh, Craig Council. Fast forward here to the sixth inning. Brewers down one. Base is loaded for Jonathan Scope. That would be a grand slam. Everyone comes home. Brewers take the 6-2 lead. And Corey Knable finishing it out for the 6-3 win. The series sweep as well. Brewers and Cubs at Wrigley starting tomorrow for a three-game series. The Badgers volleyball team finishing up their trip to Texas with a win. Wisconsin setting a school record with 12 aces in the match. That includes Molly Haggerty putting up a career-best five. The Badgers are now 5-1 and one on the season. They stay on the road for the Marquette Invitational next week. And they've got two games in Milwaukee. And then they finally come back home here to the field house. That looks so fun watching the volleyball games. Yeah, there. I no, have to get to one. Get to the field house. It is so loud and so fun. Awesome. Thank you so much. We'll be right back.
First on Fox, Dane County residents are cleaning up the Pheasant Branch Conservancy after heavy rains and flooding caused significant damage the past few weeks. That is on Fox 47 News at 9. Well, it was a messy scene on Milwaukee's east side yesterday. It was the 12th annual tomato romp on Farwell Street, complete with a tomato fight. For a $10 donation, people got to throw overripe tomatoes at each other. All the proceeds benefit Milwaukee food programs. The day started with a Bloody Mary competition at area bars, of course. How could you That's have how that you without have to start it? That's awesome. Yeah. Yes. I, it was good weather for it. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I would dive into tomatoes like that, though. They're very <laughs> if it's fantastic. sunny out, you do whatever. You do you're whatever. Just, you're just having a great time. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. And the good news, if you want to do whatever, we're going to stay sunny for the next several days. Our nice weather trend continuing through the rest of our work week. Now today, uh, a little chilly, a little breezy. Tomorrow will be slightly warmer in the low 70s, and then our breeze is going to shift directions coming from the south. That'll help us warm up by the middle of the week back into the 80s. Our next opportunity for some showers is going to hold off until the start of next week and that's only good news for us we can certainly use the dry trend right now guys i like all the good news thank you so much and thanks for joining us have a great night download the new channel 3000 app and get alerted on your mobile device the minute news breaks wherever you go be the first to know with channel 3000